guys, it's Keith Brown, TAC Room Devotional. It's Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. But it's time for a recap of what we looked at all this week. We've been studying Psalms chapter 23. Everybody's familiar with this uh, psalm. But we broke it down so that we know each individual part so it works in our lives and we come out victorious. Kind of like a good run in the cutting horse pen. Everything needs to be just right. I have to be right. My horse has to be right. Cows have to be right. Ground has to be right. My help has to be right. The judges have to see it right so that I get a good mark and I walk out of there victorious. Well, we're breaking the scriptures down so that we can see each one, how it works in our lives, so we can apply it to our lives and we can be victorious in life. So in uh, verse 1 of Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, we found out that in uh, Matthew chapter 11, that he is the good shepherd of the sheep. We're the sheep, he's the shepherd. We then saw in, um, in uh, Hebrews chapter 13 that he's the resurrected great shepherd. Amen. And then we finally found out in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4, it said that he is the returning chief shepherd. Hallelujah. He's our shepherd. He's who we have faith, hope, and trust in. He's the, he's the sheep. Uh, he's the shepherd. We're the sheep. We follow him. He gives us direction. We read on and it says, and he makes us lay down in green pastures beside the still waters. We found out that green pastures there speaks of a, 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 a good, um, something good to eat, something to make us healthy. But then also we found the still water speaks of the presence of God. In Jeremiah chapter 2, it says, My people have forsaken me, the living water. God is saying that his, a name for him is living water. We, we read in the Gospels, it says, Out of them shall flow rivers of living water. That's the very presence of God flowing out of us. So when we look at him making us lay down beside green pasture, or in green pastures beside the still waters, that's beside the presence of God. The presence of God is all around us. Amen. And... Uh, and then it goes on to say, and there he restores my soul. Praise God, it's in that place that he takes me, makes me lay down in green pastures beside the presence of God. That's where he restores stores my soul. Uh, and it says, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me, but I have to be willing to follow it too, amen? He'll lead me in the right paths. And then it goes on in, in verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk. Now notice it reverses here. Before he's making me lay down, he's leading me. But here then it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You and I choose our paths sometimes. Walk away from God. Try to do things on our own. We're off on our own. And guess what? We find ourselves in the, shadow of, in the valley of the shadow of death. But guess what? It says, but I'll fear no evil. Why? Because my faith is in my great shepherd. I know that he's got my back. My, my best interests are his. Amen. And it says, uh, yea, th yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. God never leaves us. He's always with us. Um, we can trust that. Uh, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Rod, remember I told you, rod speaks of a, of a tool of discipline. You know, he kind of has to put that on our back, kind of like sharp spurs when I use them on my horse. Um, but then the staff is like the bridle reins. It, it is a, a, a tool of direction, getting us to go in the proper direction. Amen. And then in, in verse 5 it says, You prepare a table in the, midst, in the presence of my enemies. In other words, whatever it is you're going through, your enemies can surround you all you want to, but guess what? God's still there, and he says, listen, don't focus on the problem. Sit down with me. Fellowship with me. I've prepared a place in the presence of your enemies. And watch, it says, and you anoint my head with oil. There's Christ. We studied a couple weeks, weeks ago. It's the anointing oil. It's the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. And Jesus passed that mantle. It's called the Christ, right? That's why we're Christians. Go back and study those, those uh, videos if you didn't hear them. But that anointing has been placed upon us 
so that we can do the works of Christ. Amen. That's what it speaks of. That's why we're called Christians or Christians. And it goes on to say, he's anointed my head with oil and my cup runs over. He doesn't just fill us partly. He fills us to overflow. And it says, surely, absolutely positively, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in, this, in the uh, house of the Lord forever. Remember Psalms 91 says, he who abides in the secret place of the Most High God shall or he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's our place. Our shepherd is there waiting for us. I hope you got something out of this study. P put it, make it applicable in your life. Uh, remember today, Saturday, go to church tomorrow. Hey, we love you. Jesus loves you. We pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek Him and serve Him. <music>